Welcome. I'm Rose Brower Young. It is good to join you in worship as we gather for Christmas 2021. I bring you greetings from across our district, Canada West. As we celebrate the birth of the Savior for all humankind, it is a privilege to express our gratitude for our Indigenous brothers and sisters upon whose land we are gathered, people representing Treaties 1 and 2 in Manitoba, Treaties 4 and 6 in Saskatchewan, and Treaty 6 and 7 in Alberta, as well as our Métis Nation. These people groups are also part of our Canadian story and will join us as every tribe, tongue and nation gather at the second advent of our Saviour. Our one hour together today will include congregational songs, scripture readings, a children's moment, some special music and a message of hope from our General Superintendent, Dr. David Busick. We will also hear from many of our church and ministry leaders. And so as we begin, I call us to remember, we have come at the invitation of our God, called into this place, called into this time, called into the presence of God. Let us now worship together. Hello, my name is Ryan Wood and I'm from Wainwright. And today it's my joy to lead us in a candle lighting liturgy for Advent and Christmas. Today we're going to light all of the candles, and as we do, we're going to remember. We remember that on the first Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of hope, reminding us that Jesus will come again and make all things right. The second Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of peace, reminding us to make a straight path for Jesus so that we can listen to what he wants to say to us. On the third Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of joy. This reminds us that sharing with others will bring us joy. The fourth Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of love, reminding us that God loves us and keeps his promises. Today we light the Christ candle. Christ candle illustrates Jesus coming into the world as the light of the world. This candle burns brightly to remind us that the promise of all of these other weeks has been fulfilled by the birth of Jesus. Jesus has come that we might have hope, peace, joy, and love. The Christ candle also reminds us to carry this light with us to the world around us, that the world also might know of the hope, peace, joy, and love that Jesus brings. Join me in prayer as we continue in this service of worship. Dear God, as we remember that you are the light of the world, remind us that we carry your light with us and help us to share your light with those around us that the darkest places in the world might be illuminated by the light of your hope, peace, joy, and love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. A reading of Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the skies. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all the heavens armies. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all the twinkling stars. Praise him skies above. Praise him vapors high above the clouds. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord. For he issued his command, and they came into being. He set them in place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. Praise him, praise the Lord from the earth. You creatures of the ocean depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, wind and weather that obey him, mountains and all hills, fruit trees 
and all setters, wild animals and all livestock, small scurrying animals and birds, king of the earth and all people, rulers and judges of the earth, young men and young women, old men and children, let them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name is very great. His glory towers over the earth and heaven. He has made his people strong, honoring the faithful ones, the people of Israel, who are close to him. Praise the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It recorded in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, that an angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds and said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. And this morning we'd like to sing of that great joy that is ours in Christ. Joy to the world. Light the lantern on that table. Welcome, friends. I am Ingrid, the innkeeper, and I'm so glad that you have come here to hear this special Christmas story. Now, Joseph and Mary, I'm sure you've heard about them already, were very worried. They had to travel far to go to Bethlehem to get registered. The baby was nearly due. Joseph decided to take the little donkey to carry pregnant Mary. Hmm, do you think the donkey's name could have been Eli? Maybe. I hear Canada West, you've been learning about a special donkey named Eli. So Mary, Joseph, and Eli the donkey set off with many other travelers and traveled day and night until they came to Bethlehem. When Mary and Joseph reached Bethlehem, mm -mm, things didn't go very well. As it turns out, Joseph, in all of his hurry, forgot to book a hotel room. Every place was full to the brim with people who came to register. They knocked and not. But everyone said the same thing to Mary and Joseph. We have no room. It was starting to get cold and dark when they arrived to our little inn. Joseph knocked on our door. It was so late 
we were surprised that someone still was looking for a room. We had no idea that that knock would change our lives forever. We looked out and we saw Joseph's tired face, pregnant Mary, and poor tuckered out Eli and said, our rooms are full, but we can make space in our stable with our animals. There's lots of warm hay and a lantern on the table. That night in the soft glow of the lantern, on the warm, clean hay, little baby Jesus was born. We never expected the Messiah. Jesus would come to us in this way. Not only did Eli the donkey bunk in our stable that evening, but so did Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. Have you ever had something surprise you? Something unexpected happen? Well, that happened to me on Christmas morning. Did I ever learn my lesson? You see, Mary and Joseph knocked on many doors in order to find a room to stay in. I wonder if they felt unwelcome and that nobody wanted them or had room for them. Do you think? Hmm, maybe. I think so. I wonder, at least this happens to me sometimes, that I get so busy making things spick and span, <laughs> sweeping and cleaning, organizing and fixing, that I don't have as much room for Jesus in my life as I should. I never want to miss out an opportunity or have no room for Jesus. I think we could learn a lesson from Eli the donkey this Christmas season. You see, God gave Eli an opportunity to carry baby Jesus in Mary's tummy all the way to Bethlehem. Then Eli witnessed the birth of Jesus in the stable. Can you imagine what a life-changing opportunity that was for Eli? Jesus changes the history of the world, and Eli was there. This Christmas season, Jesus is knocking on your heart. He wants to give you opportunities. Do you have room for Jesus? He wants to fill you with love and peace and joy. So now, I, Ingrid Innkeeper, no longer worry so much about spick and span it and span. Instead, I make room for. I am the daughter of the great I am. Merry Christmas. My name is Grace Bushy uh, from Winnipeg. Uh, today's reading is taken from Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Inside me. 
Is this shadow an angel or a warrior? If God is pleased with me, why am I so terrified? Someone tell me I am only dreaming. Somehow help me see with heaven's eyes. And before my Greetings to all of you and the Canada West Nazarene family. My name is David Busick, and it's my pr privilege to be the uh, J Jurisdictional General Superintendent for Canada over the next two years. And I bring greetings to all of our churches and our pastors and to our district superintendent, Pastor Rose. Thank you for this invitation to share with you uh, some a Christmas message and uh, we pray that as I speak these words, that the Holy Spirit will, will minister them to your heart as you celebrate this important season of our year. I think that most of you know that Christmas uh, is all about uh, surprises. 
we know about some of the surprises of the main characters of the Christmas story, for example. We know about Mary and Joseph. We know about Zechariah and Elizabeth. We know about the shepherds and the magi and even about Herod. But sometimes we don't know as much about the supporting cast of the Christmas story. What about those in the Christmas story that don't get the normal headlines? One that doesn't get much of the headlines in the Christmas story is the innkeeper. <laughs> the truth is the innkeeper only gets one line in the entire Christmas story, and even that is an implicit line. The Gospel of Luke simply says that Mary and Joseph had to place Jesus in a manger because, it says, there was no room for them in the inn. And so, because inns need keepers, just like hotels need managers, there had to be one heartless soul who said no to Mary and Joseph and turned them away. At least that's the reputation that we've given to the innkeeper over the years. But I, for one, think it's time for somebody to cut the innkeeper a little bit of slack. He's gotten bad press over the years, <laughs> and I'm not sure why. Because think about it. First of all, everybody that happened to be in town that weekend were there by the thousands. Bethlehem itself was not exactly a thriving metropolis. And the only reason it was thriving now was that there was a crackdown on voter registration so that the government could figure out a way to efficiently tax the people. Evidently, Joseph, in that process, had forgotten to use his, uh, his 1-800 plan-ahead number. And so with so many thousands of visitors in town and with no prior reservation to the Bethlehem Holiday Inn, he simply didn't have a room. The innkeeper was only doing his job. He was only doing what he had to do. He didn't give them a room because he didn't have a room. There was no vacancy. They were all full. Now, I can hear some of your arguments. Uh, if the Prime Minister of Canada showed up at one of your hotels, let's say at the Hyatt Regency, and they were out of space, what do you think they would do? Sorry, no rooms available. You'll have to take all of your publicity to the Marriott down the street. Of course, they're not going to do that. They're going to have a room for that prime minister immediately, and, and it would be an executive suite above that. But you see, Mary and Joseph didn't exactly look like royalty. They looked like every other ordinary Joe or, or Miriam that might be elbowing their way through the crowded streets of, of Bethlehem. The only difference between them and the rest of the folks was that they had the misfortune of the census deadline being the exact same time as Mary's deadline. There just wasn't any room. Additionally, this innkeeper had the high-stress job of accommodating as many people as he possibly could. He had to feed them. He had to make sure they were comfortable and, and answer all of the, the front desk questions for extra towels. He wasn't running an OB ward. He was running a business. Just because he didn't have room doesn't mean he was cold-hearted. The very fact that he had enough compassion to offer them his stable tells me that he was a decent person. I mean, that was more than he'd probably offered the last 15 latecomers who had stopped by. He was simply too busy with all he had to do. He was too distracted with everything on his mind and too preoccupied with the demanding responsibilities of his little corner of the world to worry much about anything else. He could have never expected that the Messiah would come in the middle of all of that stuff. How could he have known that in the womb of that little Jewish teenager with the swollen feet and the sore back was the beating heart of the Savior of the world? How could the innkeeper have known that? 
So let's give him a break. He was doing the best he could. He, he didn't know what we know. He didn't have our information. But even though we can't be too hard on the innkeeper, we still have to deal with the not-so-hidden message of his story. And that is that we serve a God who is always showing up where we least expect him to come. That's one of the major themes of Advent. Our God is constantly breaking in and revealing himself in the most unlikely of places to the most unlikely of people. And when you take a God who shows up in unlikely places to unlikely people, and then you add to that the preoccupations and the distractions of our world, those of us in church, we can be in danger of contracting a very serious disease. It's a virus called innkeeperitis. You say, what is innkeeperitis? Well, first let me tell you what it's not. Innkeeperitis is not turning away from God. It's not saying, no more room for you here. It's, it's not saying, I have no room for you in my life. I have no room for your love and your joy and your peace. No, innkeeperitis is being so busy and preoccupied that you don't even recognize the love and the peace and the joy that's right in front of you. You see, people have a way of missing the beauty of what's right in front of us. We get used to a certain way of seeing things, and it's hard for us to see anything else. And I think that could have been the innkeeper's problem. It wasn't just that he didn't have any room. It was that he couldn't see what was happening right in front of him. He was so wrapped up in the rat race of helping customers and cleaning bathrooms and keeping the business afloat that he couldn't throw on the brakes long enough to recognize what was really going on. Anne Lamont says that a lot of people live their lives like the professor on Gilligan's Island. You remember Gilligan's Island? She says, we find the time to fashion generators out of palm fronds and develop vaccines out of algae, but we never get around to fixing the huge hole in the boat so that we can go home. I think that was maybe the innkeeper. A star was shining, angels were singing, and right in his own backyard with heaven smiling down, God was giving the whole world a way to get home. But he was too busy to be rescued. I don't need to say it, do I? Inkeeperitis still plagues us today. It's so easy to get pulled in to the frantic pace of ministry and doing very good things, doing very legitimate things, but being in such a hurry that we miss what God is really doing. And when that happens, it's easy to miss the surprising ways that God is trying to break through into our lives. I will say this, not all surprises are good surprises. A dead car battery on a cold winter's morning is not a good surprise. <laughs> a group of board members who meet the pastor at the back door of the sanctuary to talk about the sermon that they just preached is not always a good surprise. Not all surprises are good ones, but some surprises can be holy. Because sometimes with the pace of our lives, a surprise is the only place God can find in our lives to give us space to shake up our world so we'll realize how much he wants to do something brand new in our heart. And the biggest surprise of all is that often God is working in the very places and the very people and the very circumstances that we would have never expected him to come. 
And that is perhaps the greatest comfort of life in the church today, is we do not know what God knows. He's always working in ways that can surprise us, that can break in and change our world. I remember when I graduated from seminary, people would often say to me, where are you going to go and pastor when you graduate from seminary? I would always answer, I'm not sure where I'm going, but I'll tell you where I'm not going. I'm not going to the west coast of California, and I'm not going to the east coast of the U.S. either. But guess where all my calls came from? You named it. We spent the first five years of our ministry in a wonderful church of a place I had never even visited. How could I have known that the grace of God would come in such a surprising way? I was surprised by God. I was also reminded of the time when Christy, my wife, and I were pregnant with our son, Ben. And we had a doctor who always delivered babies right in the hospital room bed. Uh, but but he, would, he would take him into the surgery waiting room. He was from that old school of thought that said, if a stable was good enough for Jesus, then an operating room is good enough for a baby to be born. And it wasn't a big deal, but we thought it would be nice for us to be able to have it in the comfort of our hospital room. It wasn't that we didn't want Ben to be born in, in a hospital. It was just that we didn't want him born in a cold, sterile operating room. But when he was born, we could not have known that there would be major complications. Ben was in distress, and he almost died there in that moment. He was the color of gray that I'd never seen before. He wasn't breathing at least for a minute, and he didn't make a sound for even another minute after that. And I could see all of those doctors and nurses in that operating room with all of the machines that they needed to bring back my baby son. I was surprised of how much we needed God in that moment, in that surgery room, instead of the comfort of a hospital bed. We don't know what God knows. Poet Madeline Lingel says, you have a point of view, I have a point of view, but God has view. God is not only present when we can see him, he's present when we can't see him. And joy comes from recognizing God in places we never thought he would be. My brothers and sisters, God is hidden in difficulty. God is hidden in suffering. God is hidden in reversals. He's hidden in failures. And God is sometimes hidden even in the stories of our lives. But whatever our circumstances, you can be assured of this. Christmas means God is present. He is with us, waiting to be discovered, waiting for us to learn in the shadowlands as well as in the light. And that's why we must stay focused on Jesus. That's why we must slow down long enough to make room for the new things he is doing. If we're preoccupied with our way of thinking, we can miss the very loving thing that God is trying to accomplish in our lives and in our churches. Do you know what? God could break in on you in a brand new way in this Advent season, and you never know where he might show up. It might be in the most unexpected place, through the most unexpected person, in the most unexpected of circumstances. And if you're not paying attention, you could miss him again this Christmas. My prayer for you is that he will heal all of our disease of innkeeperitis. Help us to keep room open for the Savior who is always surprising us. May God bless you. May he bless our churches. And Christy and I look forward to seeing you very, very soon in the near future. God bless you.
Greetings from the Caroline Church of the Nazarene, where you never know who's going to show up for service. What are we doing for Christmas? Well, we're getting ready for a dispersal of Christmas hampers. And there is going to be a gingerbread bash that some ladies are organizing for an outreach for the kids in the community, as well as a blue Christmas service and a Christmas Eve service. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Greetings. I'm Pastor Tim Enns from New Hope Community Church, Winnipeg. On behalf of myself and the congregation, we'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas. For Advent this year, we're following the Nazarene series, Come Peasant King. Hi, and greetings to our Canada West Church of the Nazarene family. I'm Mel Sigel, co-director of Rising Above Ministry in Grand Prairie, Alberta. We have just completed a very solemn occasion for us, a tradition that we have at Christmas time that we call Blue Christmas, a time when we can acknowledge the loss of loved ones, the pain of the addictions, and those sadnesses that we carry, but are reminded at the end with the hope that we have because Emmanuel, God is with us. Merry Christmas from the staff and board of Rising Above. A very Merry Christmas from Edmonton Southside Church. We're really looking forward to celebrating Christmas this year with our families in our community by offering Message Christmas, where we're going to make our own nativity scenes, as well as we always adopt a family in our community, a couple families in our community through our local school to be able to bless with Christmas gifts. And so we really look forward to that as a church community, being able to support in our local community. Have a great Christmas. Greetings.
Greetings, uh, Canada West District. We want to bring you Christmas wishes from Bridge Community Church here in Lethbridge. Uh, one of the things that we like to do this time of year is bring in donations for our Tree of Warmth that we give to a compassionate ministry here in the city. And so uh, just a small way that we can uh, bring Christmas hope to someone else. And so bless you and Merry Christmas to all our families on the district. Merry Christmas from the Webb family in Sedgwick Community Church of the Nazarene. This year we've been busy with doing 40 shoe boxes for the Samaritan Purse. We've also sent out over 20 baskets of cooking, baking to our seniors and shut-ins. We wish you a Merry Christmas. God bless you in the new year. Merry Christmas. Hi, this is Natalie and Pastor Todd from Main Avenue Fellowship in Sundry. And we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. May 2020 be all that you're hoping for. And uh, just. 2022. You said 2020. Cool. I don't want to do that again. It's like. <laughs> It's like, seriously, it's like that stupid movie with Bill Murray, you know, Groundhog, Groundhog Day, Day, over and over again. It's 2020 again. <laughs> and so, happy 2022. Yeah, yeah. So, remember, it's all about the wonderful gift that Christ gave us and not about the trinkets and the baubles. So, please, go out, spend some time with family and friends. Make a snow angel. Jump in a snowbank, make a big snow angel. Kiss your dog straight on the lips. Maybe just pet your dog. No, kiss him right on the lips. Look at the expression on his <laughs> face. It's really cool. And uh, in all things, be kind to one another. Enjoy the day. And from our family to yours, our church family to yours, um, have a great holiday. Merry Bye. Christmas. Bye. Greetings. I'm Pastor Darlene, and I have the privilege of serving at Hope Point Church of the Nazarene in Oles, Alberta, where we are fighting all of the things that are pressing in on this season. But despite the pressing in, we are this is Joy Sunday that this is being recorded on, and we are celebrating Advent and Christmas seasons by engaging in joy. Joy regardless of what is happening in our circumstances. And we hope that that is the same for all of you. And we look forward to when we can gather again without restraint. But in the meantime, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hi, this is Debbie Tennesseechuk, Regional Chaplain for the Prairies Region of Correctional Services Canada and Associate Pastor at Louise Street Community Church of the Nazarene. My Christmas contribution to Louise Street is lighting the Advent candles and offering an Advent reflection. Merry Christmas! Hello, Canada West District. Uh, greetings from Stettler. Uh, my name is Manuel. I'm the pastor here. and. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a, and a very blessed uh, 2022 that hopefully it'll be better than 2021 and 2020 for that matter. Um, today I wanted to share with you our Advent Art Wall. Uh, this is a, a art exhibition uh, done by an artist friend of our church uh, by the name of Scott Erickson. Um, and uh, we wanted to, to have this this year um, as, a, as a way to contemplate the reality uh, and the vulnerability that Advent brings to us through images and words. Uh, so yeah, we, we've, we've had it here, it'll be here for the whole season of Advent. Uh, and it's a space where you know, people can stop and just reflect and think and, and why not. So uh, yeah, we wanted to share, share that with you. And again, uh, Merry Christmas and, and Happy New Year. Canada West. My name is Ryan Herbert. I get to pastor here at Calgary East Church and I want to wish you Merry Christmas on behalf of our entire congregation. I want to share with you one of the ways we've been celebrating the coming of Christ as we Advent by Advent each Sunday a little bit more of our Christmas tree arrives. We're waiting for this coming and we await the second coming of our Lord as well. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and hope that you're well. Hi, I'm Ryan Wood. I'm the pastor of the Wainwright Church of the Nazarene. Every year during Advent, our congregation likes to participate with others in our community in gathering hampers for our local food bank. We have also partnered with our food bank last year and this year, not only in gathering food hampers, but 
but using our church facility as a collection point and then a distribution point for these hampers. We are really grateful to participate in this true community endeavor and uh, play our part, small as it may be, in helping to bless others during this time of year. From our church family to your church family and my family to yours, Merry Christmas and all the best in 2022. I'm David Pratipati from Christian Assembly of Southern Asia, Winnipeg. We wish you all Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We're Pastor Doug and Judy Herbert from the Lacombe Church. During Advent this year, our church hosted a take-home Christmas banquet and followed that with a Zoom party, which brought us together and also allowed us to reach out and express generosity to our neighbors. So in lots of big and small ways throughout this year, our congregation has been experiencing and participating in the joy of giving that is such a central part of the Advent and Christmas story. For this, we give thanks to God. May he bless you throughout this coming year. Ready. Merry Christmas, Canada West District. Uh -huh. Well, good morning and Merry Christmas. My name is Jeff Baker, and I am privileged to be the pastor of the people here in the Innisfil Nazarene Church. This Christmas season, we've challenged our people to collect food for the Innisfil and District Food Bank. That has been our major focus in how we are reaching out and helping those in our community around us. I hope that you and your family have a very Merry Christmas. So from our family to yours, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I'm Pastor Bernice from Open Door Community Church of the Nazarene in Prince Albert. And uh, I want to wish you all a belated Merry Christmas and the gifts of Christmas. Hope, peace, joy, and love, and the blessing of God's presence in 2022. Greetings, uh, Pastor Stu Williams here from Skyview Community Church. Uh, wish you all a blessed Advent and a happy Christmas. I'm standing right in front of our uh, grocery hampers that we are distributing in partnership with Calgary Food Bank this year. And uh, we continue to desire to serve our community, to bless them, and to shine a light of hope through Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Merry Christmas, everyone. I am Rose Brower Young, and this is my husband, Brad. And I'm currently serving with the district as district superintendent. Thank you for joining us in worship today. I remember being so happy to see the end of 2020 until 2021 began to look very similar. This season has not been easy for anyone. I read a quote by Cheryl Richardson recently. She said, people are used to being judged and criticized, but not loved. So surprise someone today. I want to remind you today that the voice of God speaking to you is one of love. He is shouting that love for you from the manger scene. As you go into this week, be assured of the love of God for you. Be reminded of the gift of salvation through Jesus for you. 
and be emboldened with the Spirit as he ministers through you. Now go in peace. Amen.